I love it. Hey, before um, I dive in and start to say all the things, um, I just love seeing all of your faces. I have gone, if you want to do this, if you're on your computer, I know it's a little different on the phone, but if you're on your computer, if you go up to the Zoom preferences, there's a place where you can choose to see like 49 screens. And so if you want to see everybody who's in the room, we're all like this big, but it's so awesome to see everybody's faces. So like head on up to your Zoom preferences and then under, let's see, where is it? Under video, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, maximum participants displayed 49. That's the button you want to push. And then you can see everybody. So everybody wave at everybody. Hi, everyone. We're all here. So, so, so cool. Um, I just love the fact I was watching the chat a little while ago. Um, I know Ashley is on the, you know, the left coast. Um, and thank you, Ashley, for getting up so early. I know we've got, you know, Arizona in the house, which is awesome. And um, I, we've got the Netherlands in the house, which is awesome. Um, and, you know, kind of all in between. And it just is an incredible reminder that um, God's kingdom is um, unified and it doesn't matter what time zone you are in or whether you are eating a pop tart like I saw Bethany doing a little while ago. I am with you. I love that. Or if you're putting on your makeup um, or if you are, you know, sitting in your office or if you're watching babies like welcome welcome. You are welcome. And I hope you feel welcome today. And also I just want to reiterate like you be you today, right? This is the, the glory of an online conference in that um, there, um, I don't want to say expectations are low because I have my expectations high for what God is going to do in the room, but expectations are low as far as like if the dog walks in the room or you got to go to the bathroom. Okay, like that's fine. So everybody just take a deep breath. It's going to be good. It's going to be a good, good day. So anyway, um, today, I'm just going to dive right in a little bit. Um, today, we're going to do an old-fashioned Bible study, if that's all right. So um, everybody, I would say, get your phone, if you're not on your phone, or um, get, your, get your real Bible. Um, I have a love affair with paper, and so um, those of you who know me know, like, I love my actual Bible, my paper Bible. Um, so get your Bible. Um, we're going to be doing a little Bible study today, and um, the thing we're going to be talking about today is Sabbath and rest, and how that relates to what all of us are doing in any walk of life, and it really doesn't matter if you are, um, you know, um, a mama, not a mama, if you're full-time ministry, not in full-time ministry, if you're bivocational, if you're a volunteer, if you are worship, tech, production, doesn't matter. Sabbath and rest applies to us all. And so that is what I'm going to talk about today. Um, but before we do, um, like Lee said, I want to talk a little bit about this community, if that's okay. Lee, is that all right if I just kind of talk about these, this crew for just a little bit. Um, okay, so just because I want to know um, you as friends by just kind of, you know, show of hands, since I can see all of you now because of my settings, um, how many of you is this the first women in worship kind of event that you have been a part of? Just show me your hand. Look at that. That is awesome. I love it. I love it. That's amazing. Okay, so fantastic. Um, okay, so I want to tell you just a little bit about how I got involved with this crew. Lee, you know, kind of gave the general introduction as far as, you know, how she and I met, but um, I just want to tell a little bit more of the story. If you've been around Women in Worship at all um, over the last couple of years, you have heard me tell the broken arm story that Lee was talking about, um, and it, it, there's no magic in it. Basically, I broke my arm um, I couldn't, I, I'm right-handed. I broke my right arm. I literally could not eat. Um, I had broken it the day before the conference started and it was still that like incredibly painful, can't move it point. And long story short, Lee showed up, literally cut my meal into pieces and practically fed me. And we've been friends ever since. So that's the broken arm story, but that was in 2014. Lee, can you believe that? I went back the other day and was like, looking through pictures for like when my arm was broken because I was like not sure 
how long ago that was, 2014. So anyway, I met Lee um, early 2014 and um, I was also looking through, flipping through some pictures and found a picture of us in 2015 um, where it was kind of me and the whole Church of the Highlands worship team. And they were so sweet. Um, I had come to a conference essentially on my own representing Seacoast and they just adopted me into their team. And that's really when um, our friendship began to solidify and um, not only with Church of the Highlands, but also of course um, with Lee. Um, a little closer to my heart, she was in the room and praying um, on October 1st, 2016, when God miraculously healed me in an instant when I was speaking to women in worship um, and um, healed me from a disorder that I had been struggling with for almost two years. Um, and so it was just precious to me that, um, you know, she was there. Some of uh, others of you were also there. Um, I have a picture of. Um, 18 days later uh, at a conference where Lee and I had our very first conversation about women in worship and the need to um, have a community where women could come together and feel like that they had a tribe. Um, I'm going to see if for two seconds, if I can share my screen, because I want to show you this picture. Hang on, stand by. And don't make fun of my hair because it was different. Okay. Well, I don't, don't make fun of mine either, but can you guys see this? You see this picture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see it. There, okay, there we are. So this was an Instagram post from 2016. And it says, it's a little hard to read, but it says that time we made plans for a worship roundtable to change the world. That's right. October 2016. So anyway, just wanted to show you that cute little picture. All right, we're back. Um, at any rate, um, Lee and I have done art conferences, roundtables, um, worship events together. Um, we've done podcasts and praying and planning and all the things. We have lots of history together. But I think most near and dear to my heart is Lee was one of the first people that I called in early 2019 and said, Lee, I'm not okay. And I'm, I'm not sure that I need to keep doing what I'm doing. And she was there for me. And she prayed for me and she rallied around me and she checked in on me. And I can't tell you how important that was to me to know that I had people and to know that I had a tribe and a community. And I knew that, yes, I, I picked up the phone and called Lee, but I knew that I had the, the power of women in worship community, you know, behind her. Um, and I just want to say, people, get yourself a tribe. Welcome to Women in Worship get yourself a tribe. Um, so Lee, thank you for having me today. Um, needless to say, I'm so grateful for you and the whole lead team. Um, those of you who I, I told Ashley, we had kind of just officially met a little while ago, but I was like, I feel like you've been my girl for a long time. Like, I feel like I know you. Um, and so anyway, um, just want to say thanks. Uh, yeah. But if any, if you guys don't hear anything I'm saying today, make sure that you are, that you have a tribe, that you're plugged in, that you have a community um, that is around you because we are not meant to do life by ourselves. And this is coming from like, I promise you, the world's greatest introvert right here. Lee, right? You got a testimony yeah. there? I had to world, drag the details world's greatest. of what was wrong with you out of you. <laughs> yes. Like world's greatest introvert right here. Like there's introverts and then you go like six miles to the right and then there's me like introvert so okay at any rate um so I want to say get yourself a community but I also want to say baby girl get yourself some rest and that's what we're going to talk about today um here to talk to you about sabbath and rest um, and as probably one of the most senior leaders in this room, in this space, right, um, let my voice be a angle of warmth. It's a marathon. Y'all, it's not a sprint. And you have to pace yourself and you have to rest. You have to rest. So trust me, I've, I've, I've given and heard all of the excuses of why I, you know, I simply can't rest. Um, and I've also come back, praise God, from the very brink of depression and burnout. And hear me, it was largely 
my fault because I was not taking the Lord at his word that rest and Sabbath were not a suggestion. They were foundational. And for years, I just kind of took it as like, well, it would be nice if I could rest. <laughs> it would be nice if I could, you know, take some time. Um, but I also know that Jesus tells a story about building your house on sand, right? Okay, I'm getting way ahead of myself. All right, so let's dive into it. Um, let me also just start by saying I am on a path of learning about Sabbath and rest. I do not claim to be the authority on this in any way, shape, or form. Um, in the last two years, I have worked uh, hard to study and learn all that I can and to try to be a student of the way of Jesus in this area. Um, and I have several books that I have read outside of the authority of scripture um, that I can recommend if you're interested. Um, however, I am no authority on um, Sabbath and rest, but I will just share with you what I've learned. Um, and hopefully the things that I have learned will keep you from falling into some of the pitfalls that I fell into, because I know that um, most of you guys, I'm old enough to be your mothers. And so <laughs> um, I just kind of let me give you um, just a little, um, not that I know it all, but just I'm a little bit ahead on the road and I would just love to turn around and go hey baby girl don't take that path you don't need to do that let me just steer you in a in a different direction does that sound good everybody good okay everybody wave at me if you're good all right awesome okay so let's talk about the nuts and bolts of Sabbath this is where we're going to have our our little bible study here okay so um, we first see Sabbath, of course, in the very, very beginning. Um, and so let's go there. Let's go Genesis 2. Um, that's where we're going to start today. And um, I will not be unpacking every scripture on um, Sabbath between Genesis and Revelation. Do not worry, but we are going to hit some of the highlights. So Genesis 2 uh, verses 1 through three. I'm going to be reading from um, the translation called The Voice. Um, it is um, kind of a mix. If you're not familiar with it, it's kind of a, a mix. Sits somewhere in between like ESV, NIV, and like the message. It's kind of right in between. So it's not, a, it's not as poetic as the message. Um, it's not as um, kind of literal word for word as NIV, ESV. So it's kind of a nice blend in between. So I'm going to be reading from the voice today. Um, Genesis 2, 1 through 3. So now you see how the creator swept into being the spangled heavens, the earth and all their host in six days. On the seventh day, with the canvas of the cosmos completed, God paused from his labor and rested. Thus, God blessed day seven and made it special. An open time for pause and restoration, a sacred zone of Sabbath keeping, because God rested from all the work he had done in creation that day. I love that, an open time for pause and restoration. And so um, we see it mentioned, I mean, at, as early in the scripture as we can get, there's your first reference of Sabbath. Um, Sabbath, of course, also made the list, right? The Ten Commandments um, as one of the foundations of our faith. So let's head over there. Exodus chapter 20. Where we'll go next. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. 28. You and your family are to remember the Sabbath day, set it apart and keep it holy. You have six days to do all your work, but the seventh day is to be different. It is the Sabbath of the eternal, your God. Keep it holy by not doing any work, not you, your sons, your daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, or any outsiders living among you. For the eternal made the heavens above, the earth below, the seas, and all the creatures in them in six days. Then on the seventh day, he rested. And that is why he blessed the Sabbath day and made it sacred. So, okay, it's made the top 10, right? Um, so here's another just couple quick things about Sabbath. Sabbath is one way that we can imitate God and be like him. Um, if 
God worked through creation. Six days worked hard, obviously. I mean, can you imagine how hard it was to create <laughs> all the things? Seventh day, he rested. So to, image, to pattern our lives after God, um, we can be like him by choosing to Sabbath. Um, Sabbath in Hebrew um, is Shabbat. And it literally means to stop. Like it literally means stop. Um, it is, according to scripture, a holy day. It is special. It is set apart. It's meant to be enjoyed. Um, I like the word delight. And it mentions that we are to work for six days and work hard, but one day of rest. And that is modeled in Genesis. We see it here, of course, in Exodus. Um, it is the only commandment that you can literally set your watch to. There's not a command. There's, you can't set your watch to like, you know, do not commit adultery or do not murder, like, right? This is one you can set your watch to. Um, you can set your life to. Cultures all over the world, whether they are Christian or non, are most are on a seven day cycle of sorts. Um, of course, it's the fourth commandment and it is the way the free people of God were meant to live into their freedom, right? It is the only commandment that starts with remember we have a lot of you know you shall not or in the old king james thou shalt not right you have a lot of those but this is the only one that starts with remember as if we would need to remember as if we would forget and yet saying all those things this is the first commandment that we will brag about breaking let that just sink in for a second as if a busy calendar, a full calendar, makes us more important. This is the first commandment we will brag about breaking. Because what's the, what's the, you know, the conversation? How are you? I'm so good. But what? Busy, right? I'm so busy. Oh, I've, I've got so much to do. I'm so busy, right? So careful there. I'm guilty, guilty. I'm just saying things that like God has convicted me of. I'm not saying like, this is for everyone and not me. Like these are things God's been speaking to me about. So that's just a little bit about the nuts and bolts of Sabbath, right? Um, and I can already hear what you're going to say, but let me tell you again, I have heard and given all of the excuses. So just um, hold your mute, right? Um, like you can say, um, but I'm in ministry. Um, I can't Sabbath, um, you know, because I work on Saturday and, and on Sunday sometimes. And, um, you know, that's the day that I work and that's my job. Choose another day. Choose another day. Um, I've got too much to do to take the day off. I simply can't. I've got kids and husband and uh, I've got a new puppy and I've got work to do. And I no, God rested. God rested. <laughs> if God can rest, we can rest. None of us ever in our lifetimes will work as hard as God worked creating the earth. <laughs> None of us. And if he can do that in six days and then rest, so can we. All right. Um, okay. So we good here. We all good. Everybody, everybody good. Okay. All right. So what, here's a few things that I'm learning um, about the difference between what is Sabbath and what it is, you know, what Sabbath is not, right? So what it is and what it's not, okay? In the Old Testament, it was obviously very legalistic. The, uh, the Pharisees, you know, it was like no work. Um, it was loads of rules. There was these sort of, um, as they explained it, like fences that they would build around the Torah to um, then explain you know, what was considered work, what was not considered work, and how you could kind of get around the law. Um, but in today's day and age, it's not like we have a million rules about the Sabbath. We actually have none. Um, and it's because most people, including myself, until recently, didn't actually follow the true practices of Sabbath at all. Today, it is often misused. And this is how um, God has been teaching me um, so please hear this coming from, you know, a place of personal reflection. I'm just sharing what I'm learning, but, um, it's, it's been misused in my own life and just treated like any other day, treated like a day off. 
Um, and that's how I treated it until about two years ago. Um, it's not meant to be a day off. It's not meant to be a vacation. Um, it's not meant to do all the work you don't get paid for to buy and sell and run errands and catch up on the cleaning and the housework um, and doing major projects around the house. None of that is bad. It's just Sabbath is not that day. Um, it's also not meant to be boring. Um, some of you may have grown up in a traditional church home um, where you weren't allowed to do anything on the Sabbath. I mean, <laughs> no laughing, no music, no fun. You basically just, you know, sat. It, is that anybody's, let me see, was, did anybody grow up like that? <laughs> yep, Bethany, yep, Sarah, okay, yeah. So, like, it's also not that. Sabbath is also meant to be a day of joy. We'll talk about that um, in a little bit. Um, or maybe you know that Sabbath is a commandment in the Bible, but it's just not something that you feel like really relates to 2021 um, or something that you need to practice. And, you know, I have been there too. Um, I thought a lot of these things about Sabbath for years and years and years. And this is largely, however, why I believe I ran headlong into a season of burnout. And as the author Ruth Haley Barton says, I was dangerously tired. All in the name of ministry and all in the name of doing good things, I came to the absolute end of myself. And that's why I'm here today talking to you and begging you to rest. So um, you guys remember the movie Forrest Gump, right? Some of you are going to be like, I love that movie. And some of you guys are like, I don't know what you're talking about because I'm too young, which is okay. Anyway, Forrest Gump, great movie. So there's a scene where he is running, 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 running. That's where the whole run, Forrest Run comes from. And he's like in the desert and there's people running with him and he's been running, physically running for like months, whatever. And um, all of a sudden you just see him start to slow down, slow down, slow down. And then he just stops. And he stands there and he turns around and he goes, I, I think I'm going to go home now. And that is kind of a picture of me. <laughs> I had run so far, so hard away from the own home in my soul. And I was exhausted. And then I realized when I kind of shook my head and realized where I was, I was so far home, so far away from the home and my soul, I had to do the excruciating work of walking all the way back and finding a new path on my way back to finding my real self with Jesus's help to rediscover ministry, to rediscover the passion to continue. Can anybody else relate? Okay, awesome. So if Sabbath is not something that you currently practice, or if you're like me, you often just kind of treated it as like another day off, then what is it? Like, okay, if it's not that, then what is it? Okay, so I have a grid that I run sort of my Sabbath activities through to help me discern, are these things that I need to be, you know, looking at on the Sabbath? Um, and I got this from a pastor in Portland, um, uh, John Mark Comer, who I just Think the world of. I think he is um, a brilliant teacher. Um, but anyway, he says this kind of grid to run um, your Sabbath activities through. It's stop, four things, stop, rest, delight, and worship. Stop, rest, delight, and worship. And so as any of your, is kind of any activity you're considering for your Sabbath day, is it rest? Does it you know, feel restful to you? Great. Is it, is it in some way worship? Great. Go for it. Is it delightful in some way? No? Then don't do it. it that's what the other six days are for. It's not that the, it's because those things are bad things. It's just that's not the day to be doing those things. Does that make sense? So there's six other days to do things that don't match up with the things on that rest, stop, worship, delight, grid. So very, very practically. And again, not that I have it figured out. What are some Sabbath things that I do? Okay. So for 24 hours, beginning at the nighttime, because I want to start my Sabbath with rest, which is the point. So I start 
at the nighttime. So for example, if my Sabbath day is Saturday, I will start at the nighttime on Friday. And then I get this lovely sleep Friday. And then Saturday is my Sabbath day. So for 24 hours, beginning with the evening, I spend time with Jesus. I will have uninterrupted family time. I will take a nap. I'll go for a walk, go for a run. I'll eat yummy food. Um, I will read a good book. I will spend time with my friends. I will go to the beach. I will play. I will write. I will dream. But none of that will be with screens or social media or email or anything like that. It will not be um, related to anything that I get paid to do in whatever uh, vocation that looks like. I just let Jesus be the agenda and I run everything in my day as it comes into my day through that grid. Um, it's not meant to be legalistic um, and to argue what's work and what's not because I'm, I'm not going to jump into that whole, you know, Pharisee conversation, but it's just meant to be a very purposeful day where the work that I get paid to do stops. And also the work of worry and the work of striving and the work of progress and I rest. I've also heard this great idea very practically of having like a Sabbath box where you fill up a, you know, a box or a bag or whatever of all of your electronics so that you're not tempted to mess with them. So you put your, you put your phone, you put your laptop, you put the charging cables to those things in your box, you know, whatever it is, um, and just seal it off for 24 hours. And I promise the world will not explode if you are unavailable for 24 hours. People will be able to, you know, deal there are ways, I know you're like, oh, but it's, you know, it got, what if I have an emergency? Okay, it's 2021, people, we can, we can, we can make it all work. So, all right, um, it is a day to stop, rest, worship, and delight. Okay, so don't get me wrong, Jesus did stuff on the Sabbath, right? Um, Luke 6 is full of Sabbath stories, and Jesus getting in trouble for all the stuff he did on the Sabbath, but most beautifully, Jesus healed on the Sabbath, and I don't think that's a coincidence at all. Um, he was just responding out of his nature and not reacting, um, to the norms of the day. So hang on, let's stop right there for just a second. So like when you're rested, you have the freedom to respond, not react. Think about that. When you're like physically rested, like you're not going to be as short with your family, with your team members, with whatever, like you are, you have the freedom to respond, not just Pow, 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 you know, react and rip somebody's head off. Guilty, right? Okay. Um, okay, so that being said, Sabbath um, is really three things. Um, and this, this is the bit that I'm going to try to unpack really quickly here. Sabbath is a gift. I'll give you all three and then I'll go through into each of those individually. Sabbath is a gift. Sabbath restores us. And it reforms us. So a gift restores us and reforms us. All right. Everybody good? Everybody give me, everybody give me like a, everybody give me, let's, let's, what can we do? Everybody give me, yes, Melanie, give me one of these. I can't do it because of my broken wrist. <laughs> I can't do one. <laughs> All it's right. so good, Tara. It's so good. <laughs> All right. Before we, before we head on, is that, any, I'm, I'm seeing you guys in the chat. Thank you so much for just like chiming in and, you know, doing the high fives and all that. Is there any questions before we move on? Cause I don't want to just like steamroll through this time by any means, just because of, you know, the Zoom platform. Normally we'd have a lot more verbal feedback and that kind of thing. So anybody have any way that- I love, I love the respond, not react. Cause Jesus, you know, I think he had like that clear headspace because he because he did know how to sabbath you know that he was able to perspective was right you know yeah 100 percent. yeah i think that's yeah. so important larissa we will get to your question uh yeah 100 um 
yeah, I, I'm, I'm just seeing people saying, how, how do we do this with kids? I'll just stop real quick and, and say, so incorporate your kids in Sabbath. Sabbath is not for you. It is for your household. Um, incorporate your kids into Sabbath. Get them excited about the fact today's the day, like, Mom is going to be with you, like uninterrupted, block off the time. Um, and if you can't, um, you know, if you're in a season where you have 10,000 babies and you just can't, you know, like honestly and truly physically say, okay, we've got this block of time, whatever, start, just start small, just do something. Um, but just be intentional about your rest. If you are, um, so if you, if you have toddlers and say, okay, today is a day that mommy's not going to be on her phone. Um, today's a day mommy is going to take you to the park and we're just going to play as long as we want to play, you know, or until nap time or whatever. Um, but it's about being available. It's about opening your heart to the gift that is Sabbath. And we'll talk about that in a second, but also very much including, you know, your children in the process and we can talk parenting strategies as far as like how to also give yourself you know some alone time so that you can actually dive in with Jesus um we can you know talk about that and maybe that's a whole nother maybe a whole nother even breakout of talking about parenting strategies and how to do that with littles um but um at any rate um I'll just throw some of that out I'll keep going and then we'll get back to some of these questions um towards the end and hopefully maybe we'll answer some of that. Okay. All right. So on we go. Ready? Deep breath. Woo, here we go. Sabbath is a gift. All right. So the first thing that we do in Sabbath is we stop, right? It's the first thing that we do. We stop and we step back and we look at our work from the last six days and enjoy it. Like take time to celebrate what God has done in your life through the work of your hand that he, like he has put things in your hand all week long take time to celebrate it. So practice gratitude, practice gratitude for all the great things that God has done. Um, I promise you, it will help you engage your next work week with a place from a place of intentionality. And um, if you're working from that place of rest, you will have a renewed sense of purpose and energy um, to do what God has put into your hand. Now, um, for some of you who know the Bible really well, a lot better than me, you will be aware that there is no commandment in the New Testament to Sabbath like there is in the Old Testament. It's mentioned lots of times in the New Testament, but you're not going to find, you know, you must in the New Testament. And there's lots of debate as far as if it's still relevant and if it's something for us today. But the way I see it is if it was mentioned in Genesis before the commandments were even set and for free people to live into their freedom, just like Adam and Eve um, were originally designed to do. And if Jesus practiced it and I want to apprentice or model my life after Jesus, that's good enough for me. And we don't necessarily have to have commands for good stuff. Um, like there's no command that, you know, you need to sleep more than three hours a night. I mean, like you should, <laughs> it's, good. it's good for you, but there's not a commandment that says that you have to do it. You, you're welcome to sleep less than three hours a night. Um, it's not going to be what's best for you. Um, it's not sin. It's just not wisdom. And so the point is Sabbath is a gift and all I need to do is just to step into it and receive it. It's a free gift. It's wise. Just go for it. Um, it's not going to be bad for you in any way. It's an invitation to enter his rest. And I don't know, if God's inviting me to anything, I want to go, right? Um, so in the United States, um, really all over the world, especially here in the United States, like we are really, really good at hustle and work and play. Um, and it feels almost un-American to not be like killing it. Um, but even in the midst of all of the hustle and bustle and hurry and instant everything, it is as important as ever now to stop and receive this gift that we have been given. Uh, let's go over to Hebrews. Um, let's jump over there for a second. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4. Okay, Hebrews 4, verse 9.
Hebrews 4, verse 9, there still remains a place of rest, a true Sabbath for the people of God. Okay, the reason I'm pulling that out is because even in light of all the crazy of this world and the digital everything and the instant everything and the hustle and bustle, the Bible says there still remains a place of rest, a true Sabbath for the people of God. Like, it's still important. Um, because Sabbath is a gift. All right. Second thing, Sabbath restores, Sabbath restores, it restores us to our true identity. And this is something that God has been um, helping me to understand. Sabbath is a day to restore your soul, to have an opportunity to reconnect with the God who made you. Um, I heard it explained like this. Free people are people who rest. Think about that for a second. Free people are people who rest. They're not driven by taskmasters like an external pharaoh. Um, but sometimes we have an internal pharaoh that kind of talks to us like this, you know, um, kill it, do that thing, post that thing, work on your body, make your kids perfect, um, you know, read this, study this, know this, achieve this. Um, if you don't, you're going to be worthless right? We, we hear that internal Pharaoh um, and we're driven by that inner voice and it, it tries to keep us bound up and not free. Um, in the U.S., we also have kind of weirdly adopted this wrong theology, I'm going to call it, of progress, which is like that we should always be going up and to the right forever. And I, I just want to say like, I don't know, like, you know, it, it's like this whole thought, like hustle, go, improve, make it better, pursue the next thing. We're constantly in motion and working hard is not the problem. Hear me clearly. The Bible is so clear that hard work is important and good for us. So please hear me clearly. But it's working to attempt to capture the future, which is always vanishing into the present that leaves us endlessly striving for today that's the problem. Okay. So we have to resist that artificial urgency of that thing called tomorrow. And that thing called, if I just hustle harder, and if I just do a little bit more, we have to resist that. That is the internal Pharaoh that is keeping us from being free. So Sabbath allows us to take up the true vocation, our true vocation of being God's kids and his free people. All right, so let's see how this plays out in the second passage about the Ten Commandments in Deuteronomy. Um, so let's go back to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, fifth, uh, Deuteronomy 5. So let's get there. Everybody okay? All right. Deuteronomy 5, uh, verse 12. You and your family are to honor the Sabbath by setting it aside for the Lord your God. Notice it says you and your family. Um, okay, sorry, sidebar. Make sure it remains holy, just as I commanded you. You should do all of your work in six days. And on the seventh, the Sabbath, do not do any work. This goes for you, your sons, your daughters, your male and female servants, your oxen and donkeys and cattle and foreign travelers staying at your house. Basically, everybody. All right. My Sabbath rest is for all to enjoy. I love that sentence. I'm going to read it again. My Sabbath rest is for all to enjoy. Remember what it was like when you were a slave in Egypt. Then, with overwhelming power, I brought you out of there. And that is why I have commanded you to observe the Sabbath each week. Okay, back to Bible study. In Exodus 20, the commandment is written so that we can imitate God and be like God because it references Genesis, right? Be rooted in God's rest so that you can be like God. Here in Deuteronomy, there's a focus on celebration of our freedom. Remember you were slaves in Egypt, but I brought you out. And that is why you need to celebrate the Sabbath. Okay, so it's, there's, it's mentioned in two ways for, for two different things. One, be like God. 
But second, remember your freedom. Remember to live like the free people that you really, really are. Obviously, I think of John 10, right? I've come that you might have life and have it to the full, 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 full. The life, like true life, that free life that we've been given. And there's a lot of us, me included, right? I'm speaking totally from experience here that are alive, but not really living. Um, and constantly breathing in, but not exhaling. That is how I lived my life. Um, I have a testimony of being at the very top of ministry. Y'all listen, but at the very bottom of my soul. I have a testimony of that. And I praise God that I am on the other side of that. Um, and again, is why I'm sharing this with you guys today. I was not embracing the practice of Sabbath um, and just realizing the freedom that was waiting for me there. Um, and that I could be more fully alive in that one day um, than, you know, a million days trying to chase, you know, the next thing um, and trying to be, you know, more than enough at my work. Um, Walter Brugman says, people who keep Sabbath live all seven days differently. It changes your whole week, your whole life um, to have an awareness of Jesus in the everyday. Um, Sabbath is supposed to be restorative, but a word of caution here. So, all right, this, this might get a little personal, but a word of caution here. It is supposed to be restorative. However, we need to make sure that we are allow, allowing Jesus and his you know, practices and purposes to restore us rather than having our own version of wanting to be restored. Meaning, I'm just going to binge some Netflix because that's how I you know, relax, or I'm going to go get a massage because that will feel good in my physical body, or I'm going to go shopping and, you know, just spend some money. Retail therapy, right? Okay. None of those things are bad. However, that is not the purpose of Sabbath. And honestly, those things are going to leave you so empty. They're not going to be the things that truly, truly restore you. So we just have to be careful to be mindful, to be rooted in God's rest on Sabbath day. Let Jesus be your agenda because rest for your soul through Jesus is connected to Sabbath rest. Rest for your soul through Jesus is connected to Sabbath rest. Everything else will leave you wanting. I promise. I've tried it. All right. Be liberated from that internal Pharaoh, right? so that you can live more freely on the other six days. All right, so Sabbath is a gift. Sabbath restores us. We doing good here, all right? Last one, Sabbath reforms us. Y'all, sometimes Sabbath is hard. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes Sabbath, the actual practice of Sabbath is hard and you're like, come on, you've just told us like, have a day off, play, relax, <laughs> take a nap, <laughs> right? But yes. But all types of reforming is hard, okay? Anything that you, um, I mean, you can get as basic as like, you know, you're the, the potter and the clay, right? Any type of reforming in your life is hard and Sabbath is meant to reform you. It's a day for Jesus to renew your thinking. That can be hard. Um, it's a day for your soul to catch up with your life. That can be hard. If you take a day to stop and rest and delight and worship, quite honestly, in the beginning, it'll feel like detox. <laughs> if this is not a practice that you're used to, it will feel like a detox. Um, your mind will fixate on other things. You will remember your to-do list and your emails and all those things that you didn't get done. But that's how you know it's working, people. That's how you know it's working is because... You're, you're stopping, you're making yourself stop. But those are those beautiful moments where you can just toss that internal Pharaoh right into the sea and drown him dead, right? Sabbath is such a day of healing. Obviously we saw Jesus, you know, healing on the Sabbath. Again, we talked about that, not a coincidence, such a day of healing. We see that in the scriptures over and over and over. Um, and I find that on Sabbath day, there's this weird thing that happens um, a couple of hours into my Sabbath day where I feel like my soul wakes up again. 
and I've worked hard for six days. And sometimes it's been an awesome week and sometimes it's not. And I come into Sabbath sometimes um, feeling worn out and beat up a little bit, but there's this beautiful thing that happens a couple hours in where I'm like, ah, oh, there she is. There she is. She's back. <laughs> and it's because I, I stop and I allow God to restore me because I need it because I'm nothing without him. And I have tried to do everything without him. So it's a, it's a time for you just kind of to allow yourself to still and quiet and hear the sound of your own breath. We don't do that very often, right? I mean, the world is loud. Our lives, our lives are loud. Um, so let's do that right now. Okay. So just very practically, everyone, wherever you are in your car, whatever. Okay. Just, just quiet. Take a deep breath from your belly, the kind that singers are supposed to do, right? Okay. Take a deep breath. And breathe out. It feels good. It? it feels good. It's meant to be restorative. And you can hear yourself breathe. Your lungs are filled with oxygen. Your brain is flooded with oxygen. You think more clearly. It's restorative. And that is how Sabbath in your soul is meant to feel. It brings uh, a physical change to your body, but also a spiritual and an emotional one as well. Okay, he will speak to you on Sabbath. He will. Um, it's not a moment. It's not one of these. You've probably heard me say this before if you've heard me talk at all um, in these gatherings, but it's not a, uh, you know, a matter of is Jesus speaking? It's a matter of are we listening? He's always speaking. It's just a matter of quieting our soul enough so that we can hear him. Put the distractions down and listen. Lee's clapping. Yes, I feel that too. Yes. Um, so here's a little quote um, that I feel like might be worth the price of admission. Um, and God gave this to me about a year ago and it's kind of become my like, <laughs> But I believe, T. Banks, okay, I believe that the volume of his voice is directly proportional to the silence of the soul. If your soul is quiet, the voice of the Lord all of a sudden gets really, really loud in your heart. The volume of his voice is directly proportional to the silence of the soul. If our soul is cluttered with I'm not stopping. I'm over everything. Blah, blah, blah. It's just life. And, you know, you can't hear him. I have a testimony. Okay. So on Sabbath, um, another hard reforming thing is the mental discipline to just set aside even thoughts of work, thoughts of worry, thoughts of striving, thoughts of wanting, um, thoughts of getting it all done, and truly practice trusting God. That is another reforming practice that happens on Sabbath, and it takes mental discipline. And here's the thing. If you get to Sabbath and you are like focused on your email, like in your brain and whatnot, don't beat yourself up about that. Again, like that's how you know it's working. Acknowledge the fact I'm thinking about work. And then just let it go. Like, just let it pass by. Don't beat yourself up about it. Don't think I'm not doing Sabbath right. Like, it's not that at all. Just, okay, like acknowledge. I was worried about that thing for a minute, but I believe in the sovereignty of God. I'm just gonna let it go, okay? So it's all right. Um, there's freedom in Jesus, remember? It's not legalistic at all. Okay, um, if you have a tendency, actually, okay, my name is Tara and I am a recovering workaholic. Hello. Do I have any sisters in the house? <laughs> okay. I just wanted to like throw that out there very honestly, right? Okay. I am a recovering workaholic. All right. So, but this is what God has been teaching me about that. And it's a little painful. I have learned this in this reforming time and um, I just, I'm going to give you a little warning. This, this might sting a little. Okay. This might sting. So, okay. I'm going to read it because, okay. This might say, okay. 
if you are a workaholic like like me like i have been okay it actually means that's what god's been teaching me that i don't actually trust the sovereignty of god to take care of the needs of the day as it relates to my work and that i need to insert myself into his plan because his plans for my hours can't be trusted ouch right ow but that is it like that is what workaholism is for a believer if i'm a workaholic it means that I don't trust him to take care of the needs of the day and that I got to insert my big old plans into his plans in order to make it work. How arrogant have I been? I mean, seriously. So please don't be like me. <laughs> please, let's, let's recover together, ladies. <laughs> let's not do that anymore, okay? The sovereignty of God is something that can be trusted. He loves us. He's crazy about us. All right. Um, but in that workaholism, it's because you really actually just have a reluctance to rest. And what God taught me was that I had a reluctance to rest because I was afraid of what I was going to find there. I was afraid if I slowed down that I was not going to like what I found. And so in the core of me, I knew that if I just kind of kept going, um, that I would just, I, I wouldn't have to face any of that, that God might want to reform in me. And so I just kept working and running and striving and hustling and trying until rest came to me. Anybody got a testimony of that? Trust me. If you do not rest, rest will come and find you. I heard it said, I'm going to try to keep it together. Whew. I heard it said that burnout is when your soul can no longer bear the weight of your life. And I was so right there. And it happens when our priorities are out of whack and you have no boundaries and certainly no Sabbath. Um, I hit absolute max burnout ladies in early 2019. I mean, every classic sign, if you Google burnout, I was all of it. I was working, you know, 60 plus hours a week, seven days a week, crushing it. Or so it seemed. I was at the helm of a thriving worship ministry. But if you could have cracked open my body at that moment, you would have seen that I was mostly coffee and mostly um, eye cream and probably sleeping pills to help me at night and a little bit of wine. But that was about it. I was a shell of a soul and was barely surviving. Um, I was not sleeping. I was emotionally absent from most of my life um, and I was putting on a brave face because that's what you're supposed to do and one day I woke up and I looked in the actual mirror not figurative like I looked in the actual mirror and I realized I didn't even know who that person was like my my face looked weird my skin was messed up I, I like I was like who are you and where where did she go? Like, where is she? And how do I get her back? And it was around that time that I reached out to Lee. And um, after friends like Lee and so many of you um, rallied around me and prayed, and I met with professional counselors and prayer and God changing the structure of my life and implementing and making space for the gift of Sabbath, Jesus pulled me through. And I am here on the other side, ladies, with a testimony of God's goodness and a strong warning for my lady friends. For anybody under the sound of my voice today, I need you to hear me clearly. 
You must rest. You must rest. Not because God wants something from you, but because he wants it for you. You must rest. You must. And it was out of this critical time in my life that the Lord gave me vision for what I feel like is like the second part of my ministry, <laughs> like the second part of my ministry life, um, which is kind of where I am now. Um, about a year ago, I handed over the reins of looking after everything Seacoast worship to one of my very dear friends, Garrett Abel, and um, who is just an incredible leader and I honor him and he is doing an amazing job. But in that handing over, it released me to be able to do kind of the things that I'm doing now, which is still worship pastoring at Seacoast. I'm still have the opportunity to lead worship. I have the opportunity to um, mentor young worship leaders and do things like this and to share um, life experience with other women worshipers. And I'm chasing the vision that God set before me um, and leveraging my leadership really kind of in a different sort of way, but in a healthier way because I'm choosing to practice Sabbath and I'm realizing just really how essential rest is. And so for these days, I can't wait for my Sabbath day. <laughs> for these days, I like can't wait for it. Um, it feels like freedom and it feels like I can breathe and where I'm restored and it's joyful and fun. And I meet with Jesus and I get to spend time with, you know, people I love and I rest and then I work hard for six days mm -hmm. and then I rest and I'm able to work from my rest, not for my rest. So I rest and then I work. So I'm working from a place of rest. I'm not working, 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 crashing into Sabbath, right? We rest so that we have a place, you know, to build from. Mm -hmm. I work from my rest, not for it. So, all right, wrapping up, here we are at the end. Um, so all you worship people, production tech, however um, you spend your time, um, Sunday's not your Sabbath. <laughs> Let me just say that. Sunday's not your Sabbath if you are in worship world. Girl, you working, okay? Sunday is not your Sabbath. Choose another day. Saturday might not even be your Sabbath. If you have church on Saturday, Seacoast did church on Saturday for, well, gosh, like 25 years, right, Natasha? Like until just a couple of weekends ago, we stopped doing church on Saturday night and moved some services to Sunday. Um, so Saturday might not even be your Sabbath. If, if you're doing church on Saturday, choose another day. Um, I now am kind of bivocational. I now have opportunity to work for an incredible hunger fighting organization Monday through Friday. Um, and um, so it's amazing. But if you're bivocational like I am now, like you have to get creative of how Sabbath actually works um, because I'm working Monday through Friday at a different type of job and then still doing worship on the weekends. And so I have to really get creative about my Sabbath time and what that looks like and being very purposeful about guarding that and protecting that time. Um, so if you're in ministry, um, if you work for the church, work for the church for five days, take a day off to do all the things you're not getting paid to do. Take a day off to do your laundry and, you know, run your errands and all that business. And then take a Sabbath day. There's seven of them. It's for you. And if, if you are, um, you know, doing other things like work, take a day off Sabbath. That is your pattern. But for those of you who like me um, are finding yourself weary, burnt out, exhausted, there's a rest built into the fabric of creation itself. You can set your watch to it. You can enter into it. You can build your life around it to bring you the rest that you really need. It is for you. Jesus is the answer. Yes. You know, like in Sunday school, what's the answer? Jesus. 
Yes, Jesus is the answer. Um, and the practice of Sabbath with Jesus. But he's the only one that's going to give you that real rest. So that real rest, the gift of Sabbath, the restorative work for your heart, the reforming of your soul, it all happens in the context of Sabbath as we practice the reality of the rest that Jesus invites us into. So that's it. So, so good, Tara. So good. Thank you. Have rest. Wow. I mean, everybody now has to, on their break, is going to be like, okay, what can I, what can I rearrange? What can I share? <laughs> Um, that is beautiful. And thank you for being so vulnerable because I, I will say this, I was, I was sensing while you were talking, um, that to, to end this session, cause we got like three minutes yeah. before you can take your break. And, um, but I would love to, I want to pray against shame because what happens is with women, we, we carry this, we, we feel like we're supposed to carry everything. Absolutely. If you're married, you carry your husband, you carry your kids, you carry your job, you carry the laundry physically and emotionally, Lord. you know, you, you carry all these things. So, um, if that's you, I mean, I really would like for us all just to be bold that, you know, yeah. Satan would love nothing better than after a talk like this, that you make sure you don't twist it and you go in the wrong direction with it. And yeah, that you say, sense. okay, I will start from this point because in the Bible it says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So there's, right. there's no condemnation for anything. So if, if we've all been screw ups in this area, <laughs> which I have been screw up, I mean, I have been, I mean, really until quarantine, I was so, I was ready to quit. Honestly, I was like, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm not doing things right. And then quarantine for me, shut me down. And I was like, Oh my God. You know, so I actually over the past year and a half, I feel like the Lord has been rebuilding me in this yeah, way, yeah. Tara. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, if that's you and, and you would just be okay with admitting it, like if you would say, Hey, yeah, shame will come against me. Just, just raise your hand and let's just pray. You know? Yeah. It's okay. I raised yeah, mine too. We don't, we don't, yeah. we don't want to. So, yeah. so Tara, will you close this out? Absolutely. In prayer. Hey, and by the way, we have a panel at the very end today from 1 30 to 2 30. We can bring everything we've talked about back into a huge conversation. Okay. Yep. So write down yep. your questions yep. and that. So Tara, will you just pray us out and just pray yep. against that shame and, and yeah, go for it. hundred percent. Um, Jesus, we love you. We are so honored by your presence today. Thank you so much for being with us. We sense your presence. We know you're here with us. Um, Father, we know that you are crazy about us. And because of your great love for us, Father, um, there's, there's no room for shame in your great love. And so God, I just pray against that in the name of Jesus. And as I look at the faces um, on this screen today, God, I just, I pray that you would protect the hearts and minds of these beautiful women um, from any work of the enemy, that he might want to lie to them, that he might want to steal um, the meaning of what we've talked about today and twist it in any way. God, I pray that anything that I have said that uh, has been, uh, you know, fleshly, I pray that that would fall away and Lord, only your words would remain and that those would be the words that these women would hear, that those would be the ones that would resonate in their soul and that it would drown out the voice of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Enemy, I say to you, you may not, you may not have these women, you may not have their thoughts um, and that everything that they are going to um, encounter today will be um, from the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit's power will be at because of in me that going into that zone. Uh -huh. way. So God, we love you. We thank you for this time. We are grateful for your presence. And I just thank you um, for the opportunity to talk about rest and Sabbath in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hey, we all needed that. I mean, Tara, honestly, that's even my soul needed it. So thank you so much. Everything you said was beautiful. When you said free people or people who rest, I mean, that whole little section right there, everybody, everybody's like, yep, yep, the whole section. <laughs> so guess what, guys? It's recorded, and we took notes, and we have it all quoted out. Bethany was over there. You can see Bethany on her phone going, oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> she was writing down quotes like crazy. I figured out that I was trying to type, and then you kept saying stuff. I was like, stop, Tara, slow down. <laughs> I just muted, and I was like, and then she said, oh, so. I know. I just have a paragraph. 
And there's so much more that we could dive in. And I had Larissa up there. She was like, let's make it a podcast. I was like, let's make it yeah. a podcast. Cause this is okay. That, yeah. That we have podcasts, by the way, we yes, have we do. new ones to release, but, um, we haven't released them yet. So we'll just make this one of them because yeah. it's incredible. Okay. Every